Hello and welcome to a very much long overdue review of Party Hard 2 for Tech Power Up. Um, this is a game developed by Pinnacle Games, I have no idea if I'm saying that right, and it was published by Tiny Build, who I don't know if you remember, uh, many, many years ago I did a review of a game they um, published called Boyd, I think, which was a, a peculiar little RTS game, but they, they, they tend to publish in indie games, uh, if you can call them indie games when they have a publisher. Uh, it is made in Unity, it's a sequel to the original Party Hard game, which was 2D, and this one's still sort of the 8-bit graphical art style, um, but it is sort of kind of 3D, I guess, the way you look at it. Uh, and the best way to describe it is sort of halfway between Hotline Miami and the latest Hitman uh, games by Square Enix. It's that sort of... Uh, definitely that sort of graphical art style of Hotline Miami, but the gameplay of Hitman uh, in in a fairly loose uh, sense of the word. Uh, in terms of the storyline, it's just sort of got a few cutscenes scattered in between the levels. Uh, there's 16 levels, so you sort of build up the story from there, and then you sort of understand why this person's doing what they're doing. It's not fantastic, but it works as a, a sort of a half decent way of gluing together the game. Uh, to make some semblance of sense. Not that it really matters, because honestly, I, I wouldn't play this with the story, that's for sure. Uh, in terms of gameplay, it does have local co-op, no online co-op. Uh, it's very much like Magicka in that you can uh, you can basically go crazy with each other and ruin each other's plans and then just fail catastrophically a lot, which I guess would probably get old pretty fast and a bit irritating, um, because playing the same level over and over again is a little bit frustrating. Uh, or you can sort of team up together and, and, and crack some master plans uh, with a lot of the options that are available in this game. Either way, I didn't manage to play any co-op. Um, I just sort of threw myself into the, the main campaign and tried to get through as much as possible. It is quite a hard game. Um, don't be fooled by the graphical style. You'll see me failing a hell of a lot in this gameplay video um, because it's not that easy. And I, I, it's very easy for you to look at someone playing gameplay for this game and go, oh, why did you do that? You should have done this. Oh, that was stupid. But when you're actually playing it, Christ, it is, it is hard. It is challenging. It is a very challenging game. Um, it is by no means easy. So yeah, it looks arcadey, but it is not arcadey. Uh, in terms of tutorials and sort of showing you how to do things, uh, there is no hand-holding in this game. Very little is explained. There's a couple of billboards around the maps which you can sort of interact with and it'll say, hey, you can do this with this. There's a couple of them, but not many. Um, but the game very much leaves you to your own devices. It's, there's zero hand-holding uh, and the whole game is very much a... Uh, you're the player, you explore all of the things that we programmed into this game, try and find them. Um, and one thing that I found quite nice about this game was sometimes I found myself walking up to things and going, hey, I wonder if I can do this. And a lot of the times I found myself saying, yes, I can actually do this. Uh, they programmed a hell of a lot of options in this game. Um, and it, it was quite nice to see what kind of stuff I could get away with and just how I could interact with certain things in the game as well. So that was quite positive overall. The AI is pretty tough. Uh, sometimes you can get a little bit screwed over by uh, the AI having sight in places, uh, which you didn't think that they did, uh, which which is relatively realistic. And in a lot of cases, you can sort of sneak around enemies in other games and you'll be right behind them and they, they function on a sort of cone of sight thing. Um, but this one's hard. There are no sort of indicators as to where the enemies can see you. So I guess it's, uh, it's closer to a sort of purist uh, way of things. Obviously, it's, it's not going to be ultra realism in this kind of game but it is is definitely tough it's um it's not an easy way to get through all of these 16 levels um like i say there is 16 levels in total they start off quite small and they slowly but surely get more and more complicated uh, very much large and uh, a hell of a lot of different options to approach them um there is a small crafting system implemented in this game which is not immediately obvious it doesn't have a crafting menu or anything like that uh, your inventory is quite small you can only hold four things at once one of which is sort of your default knife which you can't get rid of um and it doesn't tell you what you can craft or how you can craft or where you can craft it a couple of the billboards that i mentioned earlier are in the game that tell you how to make stuff uh, will show you how to make a few rudimentary items and um, but i will say that um most of it is very much a pick up a load of items and see if the little crafting pop-up comes up uh, at the bottom right of the screen um, which is not that often. Overall, I think you can only craft like 10 or 12 things. I, I can't remember. I haven't checked. I made quite a few. It did take me about five hours of gameplay to figure out what I could do with pills. 
um, which might have just been sort of a freak accident of not having the exact two items required uh, in my inventory to make anything with them. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, the game is very much open-ended and you have to find out all the things that you can do. Uh, so the crafting system, while it's there, it's sometimes a little bit tough to, to sort of work your way into. But I has the guess that once you have learned all of the recipes and you've sort of learned the layout of some of the maps you can literally go straight to places and start concocting um some genius plans and it, it, it is quite interesting um the game is sort of stealthy i mean you're constantly walking around in broad daylight or night time um but it, it does have various stealth elements um one interesting thing that this game has is a sort of a multi-kill meter uh which would sort of indicate that it's an arcade game but it's not um, you can sort of chase for points, but the general gameplay is opposite to that of chasing for points, um, which sort of doesn't really make that much sense in my mind. The easiest way I found myself of getting a multi-kill is sort of tossing a grenade into a dancing crowd or putting some gasoline on the floor and setting fire some cars or sort of driving through people with a motorcycle, but there's no real way to sort of rack up loads of points by speeding around the map and murdering loads of people all at once. Um, it's not that kind of multi-kill meter, which just seemed like an odd implementation of the whole thing for me. Um, it just, I don't, I'm not entirely sure it belongs in the game. I'm not sure the game needs a point system um, per se, other than to sort of add an extra level of sort of um, progression in order to unlock things. Uh, in terms of unlocking things, there's only sort of four things to unlock, which is a bunch of different characters. Um, the main character um, can be swapped out for other characters, which are fundamentally better which I was a little bit disappointed about. I was kind of hoping that um, of the multiple playable characters, some of them would have strengths and weaknesses, but no, the main character is just straight up a weakness. Overall, he kind of sucks, um, and the rest of the characters are just better. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't say that it sort of gives you a different options depending on which character you're playing. It's just they're all better than the main guy, which, which sucked a little bit. Um, it can get a little bit repetitive and frustrating if you go too fast. I noticed a lot of people when they were talking about this game that they found it a little bit frustrating uh, because it was so challenging and when you'd get through 99% of a level and then you'd just lose and you'd have to start all over again. And it is frustrating, but I guess it, uh, it sort of will appeal to that purist crowd that enjoys games like um, like Dark Souls or something along those lines. Very much sort of a roguelike, but not sort of roguelite, shall we say. Um, there are boss fights in the game, which, Christ, they are even harder than some of the maps, which is ridiculous. Uh, maps are the same, they're not randomly generated, um, but the AI where they sort of spawn things, item spawns, box spawns, the whole works, everything's randomised so it doesn't get too sort of repetitive um, too quickly. Like I said, the levels get a hell of a lot bigger and a bit more complex. There's a lot of objectives, um, including alternative objectives, so you can sort of follow the game in a very sort of vanilla kind of way and murder certain people um, or you can go on an absolute rampage and you can successfully complete a map just by killing everyone um there are interesting additions to things that you can interact with like uh, you can get past guards if you kill a certain person first and get an id guard key if you run out of gasoline you can murder someone leave their body in public uh, and then hope that someone calls the police wait for the police car to arrive and then siphon gasoline from their car it's it's, it's nice little touches like that which make it a little bit more interesting um there are sort of the like i said there's these mixed points for murders there's there's anarchy there's murder there's sort of stealth and there's another one i can't remember it didn't really feel like you could necessarily complete an entire map by sort of only following one scheme i very much felt like i had to mix it up a lot and i couldn't really complete a map without getting frustrated and annoyed at the game um so whether that was sort of an, uh, a positive thing to add in i'm not entirely sure i mean I can understand needing the progression of sorts, but it just, I don't know, something didn't quite feel right to me. Um, the game does feel quite slow to start off with, like because the first character has no stamina, you can't really run anywhere, and once you get sort of called on by the police and you've seen once, that's it, you're basically lost with the first character. Uh, with the other characters, you do actually have a chance uh, of sort of evading police arrest, but with the first guy, if you go through the whole game with him, like the second you get seen by someone, you may as well just quit and start again and save yourself the hassle. Uh, in terms of video options, there are very few. It's just sort of a few resolution things, post-processing. But it's an 8-bit game, so to be fair, unless you're running on a potato, there's there's not much... Well, you would imagine that there's not much this game would run on, but there's there's not much in the way of things in terms of lowering quality settings to get a little bit more performance. 
in terms of performance, it's okay. It's sort of average on the graphics, average on everything else. However, CPU performance is astronomically high. Uh, I did find the CPU performance a little bit galling, shall we say, uh, on 1080p. So I would recommend a not a massive multi-core CPU to run the damn thing, but a strong uh, CPU to run it. Um, and it's got Twitch integration, so if you're Twitch streaming using the Twitch integration, you're going to need even even beefier CPU. So every, overall, everything was fine, but CPU usage was a bit high for my tastes for a game of this caliber, but I would imagine it's because there's so many NPCs on screen at the time. In terms of hard recommendations, I'd probably go for a modern i3 or a Ryzen 3 uh, just to run the game sort of basic 60 FPS on 1080p. You're going to need at least 4 gig of RAM. Uh, in terms of graphics cards, um, to get exactly the right performance for 1080p at 60 FPS, you'll need an R9 270X or a GTX 960, um, or in general, just a good graphics card around that level with a gig and a half of VRAM. So sort of overall, it's a pretty good game. It's a good, good game, not sort of an amazing, amazing game. I can't imagine seeing myself playing this game more after I finished this review, to be perfectly honest, because it did get a little bit old and frustrating. Uh, it is very challenging. It's definitely for a specific market. I think there's people that are going to love this. Um, I quite enjoyed games like Gunpoint, and this, this sort of rings similar to that in that it's quite challenging, um, but very much satisfying when things go correct. Um, the whole point of the game is that it's just sort of an, a blank book for you to build yourself. Uh, you can approach any level exactly how you want, and I think that's probably one of the sort of the main positive factors for this game is there's so many options available to you that are not told to you. It's all about you exploring the game and seeing just what you can get away with them, and just how far they programmed crazy things into there. And there's an, there's a, there's a few nice chuckles in there thrown in too. Uh, art style is pretty awesome. The animation is really, really good for an 8-bit game, like absolutely solid. Uh, there's just tons of options for everything. Um, overall, yeah, like I said, it's, uh, it says it's one of those 7 out of 10 games. I mean, Party Hard 2 is to Hitman as sort of singularity was to Heart Life, Half-Life even. Um, so yeah, a good, good average game overall. Uh, it's $20 on Steam and, um, and 17 euros as well, or just a few cents under that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, as usual, you can see the sort of full performance analysis um, on the link, which I'll put at the bottom of this video um, to see some of the specific details. And hopefully I'll see you guys for another review next week sometime.